Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about code snippets and this is a quick tutorial that shows you how to find them, use them, and create your own to hopefully speed up your development time. Okay, first of all, I have uh, Xcode 8 open and over in the utilities pane, you'll find the code snippets down at the bottom by clicking on the two curly braces. That will show you your code snippet library. Now Xcode gives you a lot of uh, templates right out of the bat, or a lot of code snippets right out of the bat. And to use them, you simply find the one that you want. It gives you a little preview if you click on it. And then you click and drag it over into your code window. And from there, it gives you a template to start from. Okay. Now, I have a Swift project open. So if you'll notice a lot of these code snippets, you know, they have some for Objective-C, C++. I don't really need a lot of those. So what I can do is I can filter them to just the Swift ones by typing in Swift. And now we have all the Swift templates. So from here, they're pretty handy. You can actually uh, go through and see the structure of the code for Swift. Maybe you're coming from Objective-C or from a different language, and you want to see the, the syntax on how Swift does things differently. You can actually use this as a, a learning tool and just click through them and see the structure for the code. So I find that pretty handy in that regard. Because a lot of times, you know, your, your try catch is now a do catch and it might be a little bit different on how that syntax is put together. So it's handy in that regard. Now you might have been using snippets and you didn't even know about it. Let me, get, let me show you an example here. If you go into the code and I type in if, I want to create an if statement. Now you'll notice there's three code snippets that are already showing in this, in this list. And you can tell they're code snippets because of this, uh, the curly braces you know, matches the button over in your utilities pane. So these gray curly brace icon are actually snippets. And if I uh, hit enter, then it shows the snippet and it shows the placeholder text here where you can type in whatever you want. So you might have been using snippets and you didn't even know about it. Now let's create our own. I have something uh, that I want to create a code snippet with. Now what you have to do first is you have to put in your code. So I'm just going to paste it in there. And now I want to create this as a, a code snippet. And basically all this does is it creates a URL and, and then it, the code basically gets whatever is at that URL. In this case, it's an image. And it's going to convert that data that I get back from that URL into an image. Okay, so this is what I want for my snippet. So I'm going to highlight it. Then I'm going to click and drag it over into my snippets uh, code snippet library. Once it's there, I'm going to give it a title, and I'll just say this uh, download image. And for this, also what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it's Swift 3, because there's different Swift languages that are valid, but I want to be able to tell that this is Swift 3. For a summary, I'll just say uh, creates URL and downloads data and converts it to an image. Okay, so there's my description. I'm gonna say it's a Swift language. Uh, this can be handy because um, you can filter on it, and so if you only want Swift language, then this will show up. Platform, I'll just say it's all. Completion shortcut. Now this is what you can type in in your code editor for it to prompt you to come up, like we did with the if statement. So for this, I'll just say, uh, I'll just say, download image. I'll just make it one word. Now, completion scope. What this is is it allows you. Uh, now, for example, so if I type in my completion shortcut uh, in different places in my code, it will only prompt me that with the code snippet library, uh, depending on where I am. So if I'm inside of a function or a method, it'll prompt me then. But if I'm at the top level or say outside of a class, it's not gonna prompt me and, sh and, and show me that I have a code snippet available. So I'm gonna leave this as function or method. So when I type in this completion shortcut inside of a function or method, then it'll prompt me with the code snippet. Uh, this looks good, so I'm gonna click done. And let's give it a test. Let's delete this. And now remember we set the scope to inside of a function. So view did load, of course, is a function. But if I come out here outside of the class and I try to type in 
download image, nothing comes up, right? Okay, so that scope works. So if we're inside of here and we type in download image, there it is. I actually have two because I created a, another one, uh, image download, uh, which does something differently. But what I want is download image. And I can read the description down here to make sure it's the right one. Creates URL, downloads data, converts it to an image. That's what I want. So I'm going to click enter. And there's my code. But you'll notice there's something. Every time I type this in, I'm going to have to replace this string with something that is relevant for what I'm doing. And you'll notice there's an error. It says, you know, web image view doesn't exist. So I want to replace that with a real UI image view. Uh, that I have in my code. So let's edit this a little bit so I can uh, So it prompts me to change that code uh, when I add that template that code snippet. So here's my uh, Snippet here download image and I'm going to click edit Now I want a placeholder for this string right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a, a less than symbol or open bracket pound and inside here I'll say your URL. And I closed it with another pound and a greater than symbol or a closed bracket. And you notice um, it changed it. So now it's it's a little bit different color. Uh, I select it, it's one item. And I want to do the same thing for my control name here. So again, I'm going to have a uh, open bracket, pound, and I'll say UI image. And I'm going to close it with a pound, and watch what happens when I close it with a closed bracket. Okay, it changes the format. So let's click done there. I'm going to delete this, and let's try it again. Download image. It's that first one there. I'm going to click enter. Now notice what happens. It highlights. It, there's a like your URL is a placeholder now, so I can type in anything I want there. HTTP, and maybe there's an image at Apple. Dot com I want to use and it's uh, I don't know icon.png I don't think that's really an image URL but for this purpose we'll use that now to go to the next placeholder where I have UI image I'm just going to click tab and it'll go there and then maybe I have uh, a control that's just called image so image.image .image, and I want to set to the data so that's how you create your own snippet and play with placeholders inside of your snippet. There's another snippet I want to share with you that I created that comes in very handy when working with table views. Let's take a look at it. Okay, now this snippet, what it does is it has the three basic functions that you need when working with any table view. It basically defines how many sections are going to be in the table, how many rows are going to be in each section, and it dequeues the cell so you can work with it in some way. Very handy when working with tables. And I'll just show you what I have, uh, how I set it up. It has a, here you see the title, the description. Again, I put Swift 3 because the code is different between Swift 2 and Swift 3. So I specify that this is just for Swift 3. And for the completion scope, you notice this is different. Before we had the completion scope for function or method, but since this defines a whole class, I put it at the top level. So that way, I can use the, the completion shortcut anywhere, and it will be valid. And I'll show you how that works. Let's click Done. I'm going to delete this class. And from here, I'm going to start typing in table 3. 3, 4, because it's Swift 3. OK, so I just hit Enter here. And boom, puts in the whole class. And from there, I can just uh, edit the, the code. So I can use it any way I want. You have an outlet here. Of course, you'll have to connect that to your UI view or you know your uh, storyboard. And you can put a placeholder here if you want to change the, the name. Um, you can put them uh, placeholders for every place where there's a uh, where it says table view. But I usually just keep it like that. All right, and that gives me the basic starting point. Uh, start working with a table view. If I need to mock something out real quick or prove out something makes it super fast rather than have to type it all over again. Now that you've created some of your own code snippets, you might want to delete them. And all you need to do is just select the one that you want to delete. 
and you hit the delete button and you'll notice you get a message up here and it will be deleted permanently. You cannot undo it. I'm going to cancel because I'm not going to delete this one. But I want to show you how you could delete it. Now, if you wanted to delete one of these other ones, you know you'll never use this in it with frame, Objective C code. Nothing happens when you click delete. So how do you get rid of it? Well, you can get rid of it, but not through Xcode. And it's kind of a process, and I can show you how to do that. Okay, in order to modify this list, or if you want to delete all of these code snippets that come with Xcode, here's what you need to do. First, you want to go to your finder. There we go. And go to applications, go to Xcode. And from Xcode, you want to show package contents. All right. Then click on contents. And then from there, you want to go to frameworks. And go to idekit.framework. Go to versions, A, resources, and then in here, go down to the bottom, you want to find system code snippets dot code snippets. System code snippets dot code snippets. This is the file that contains all of the code snippets that Xcode uses or has in Xcode by default. So, what I would recommend is first you need to make a backup copy of it. Or actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to rename it here. And I'll say this is the old one. And it's going to want my permissions uh, to modify this file. OK. Now it's modified. Then what you want to do is you want to create a new file uh, with the same name. And I've already done that. Let me just go to my desktop here. Uh, right here. No, not that one. This one. Codes, system code snippets dot code snippets. Let's edit that. And here's what it looks like. It's basically the same file, except what I did is I took out everything in between the array. So now this will leave you with, with nothing left in, uh, in Xcode. And for some of you, you might want to do that. If you don't think you need any of the system code snippets, then you can do this. Once you have this file, let me close this. Then you can, actually, I'm going to minimize Xcode. Then you can just take this file, drag it into here. Uh, I'll need to authenticate again. OK. Now you have the new code snippets file with nothing in it. Now, if I go in, I, I restart Xcode. Let me just quit that. Start it again. I'll go back into the project that I was just in, code snippets. And you notice my code snippet library only has my code snippets. The code snippets you create are actually in a different location. So by modifying that file, you're not going to affect your own code snippets. This might make it easier for some of you if you only if you know you're only going to use your own code snippets. Uh, if you want to restore the code snippets, you can come back into your finder and rename the files. Um, you know, maybe I, I call this one uh, empty because I know this is the one with no code snippets. So I can rename this empty and I'd go back and take off the old. I have noticed when I've gone back and forth, sometimes it requires uh, not only an Xcode restart, but I have to restart the computer. And then when I start Xcode, it pulls in all the old uh, or the default snippets again. So it's just a little tip for you if you want to modify that. You can also modify this file if you want to let me just choose an application here. Maybe some of the uh, code snippets that you have in here uh, you know you're not going to use. So uh, maybe you take out this one because you know you're never going to use that one. So you can just delete it, save it, uh, and then you can modify that list of code snippets available. Maybe you only want to leave the Swift code snippets in there or the Objective-C code snippets. It's up to you. But I will warn you, whenever Xcode updates, it could overwrite this and just reset your, your code snippets file. 
So uh, make a backup copy for your own custom version of your factory default code snippets. All right, I hope this helps. Thanks.